You're recording. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Chamber to Community Back to Business NWA series presented by the Rogers Lowell Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm Karen Wagaman. I work for the Rogers Lowell Area Chamber of Commerce and I do economic development. And this series is devoted to small businesses and to entrepreneurs and anyone who's interested in growing their business or becoming more professional. And we've gone to this virtual series as a result of the coronavirus. So it's, it's had blessings and curses. Yes, we are, um, we are learning to use Zoom and um, perfect it and get better at it all the time. It's also giving us opportunities to reach out to people that wouldn't otherwise participate if we were having these live workshops. So we are glad all of you are here. And I do want you to know that we will be adding this to the Chamber of Commerce YouTube channel in a day or so. So because you are registered um, for this workshop, we will also send you the link so that you can watch it again later or share it with someone else. So um, just be advised, you'll have more than one opportunity if you miss something. Um, the, this particular workshop is called LinkedIn for Thought Leadership, Grow Your Network and your own in Your Own Industry. And it is presented by ModThink. And I want to um, welcome, well, actually, first I want to thank our sponsors. Cox Communications and ModThink Marketing are sponsoring <coughs> this workshop. So we appreciate um, their time and their commitment to helping small businesses grow. Next, I would like to introduce our sponsors. We have Brent, Roberts, Brent Robinson. Brent is the CEO and Chief Thought Officer at ModThink Marketing. They are based in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and he and his team includes Katie Brandt. Katie is a junior ex account executive for ModThink. She will be graduating from the University of Arkansas on de in December of 2021 from the Sam M. Walton College of Business. Her degree is in marketing and a minor in management. The other thought leader is Lindsay Wagaman. She is content marketing strategist at, Mar at ModThink Marketing. And she just graduated from University of Arkansas, Sam M. Walton College of Business. She earned her degree in marketing and supply chain management. She does happen to be my daughter. So um, you don't have to be nice to her on that account. We're gonna be tough on her. Um, we're getting all we can out of her while she's still um, part of the university system. And she's done a great job helping us promote this um, event as well. And I think that's probably why we have people joining that we didn't necessarily expect. So welcome to the three of you. Fantastic. Hey, Karen, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate having you. And thanks everybody for joining us. Um, I will go ahead and put it out there. This is the first time I have done a true uh, webinar. So if I seem awkward, it's because I am. Um, I started ModThink. You want to go ahead and go to that next slide, Lindsay? Yes. Um, I started ModThink in 2012 after being up in uh, Bentonville for many years. I started at Rockfish and then went to Collective Bias, but as y'all know, that's CPG world. Um, but I did have the opportunity to work with um, this thing called Facebook when it came out and some other uh, bloggers and influence marketing and a number of other things. Um, and at one point in 2012, I decided to step out and start my own agency and I was getting myself out of CPG uh, so I could work with small and medium sized businesses, which is uh, having been a past uh, um, ice cream shop owner uh, and some other uh, ventures, uh, it was a little more closer to my heart. So that's what I did. Uh, primarily social media in the early days, but now that's just part of what you do when it comes to marketing. And uh, we've developed into a full service uh, organization, uh, still a boutique firm. There's five of us that are full time. And then we have nine interns, I think right now. Um, but you know, we, we, the services that we offer include everything from content marketing, inbound marketing, paid media, social media, um, uh, but, but an area that we've really developed expertise is in uh, knowledge, uh, thought leadership, and, uh, and that type of content marketing. Influ we call it micro-influencers, which we're going to go through some details on that. Um, 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over to Katie and Lindsay and let them uh, walk through this with you. I was just wondering one thing. Uh, do, do, uh, what's the primary reason folks came in today? Is it, is it because, because I'm curious about why we had such a turnout. Are there folks who are, is it job search? Is it growing your business, small business, large business? Is there a way to kind of find out in the chat about that? I think there's probably a variety of reasons people are joining, but we do push it. We personally push it to small businesses and helping them maximize their, their yeah. digital presence, helping them grow their business. But because um, your company has uh, contacts in the, in the world of the university and students and Omar Kasem also shared it with some of his contacts, I think we probably have a greater variety than um, just small business. Yeah, and, and so just to, you know, be real uh, clear on it, you know, our, our primary area of, of expertise with our, with our clients is, you know, they'll have a high value offering and there's usually a long sales cycle that requires quite a bit of nurturing. There's a lot of stuff that shows, um, it used to be seven touch points before somebody would buy your product, uh, you know, pre-internet. Uh, but there's a thing I was reading on Think with Google recently where they said there's over 300 contact points that will happen digitally um, as a person is going through the buyer's journey. And many of those, the majority of those happen before they ever speak to a salesperson. So a lot of what we do helps to put your name out there on the content, on the social media that helps people be a part of that conversation as it's going forward. Yeah, I'm looking at a number of these. Most everybody's looking to grow grow their business. So um, hopefully we'll give you some good tips. Uh, but please ask questions as we go along. Um, the two people who are going to be talking to you, Katie is uh, one of our newest uh, team members, newest mod banker. Uh, she's in charge of a number of our Walton College projects. Walton is one of our big clients. Um, and if you've seen any of the work that, or if anybody's noticed, uh, for example, uh, Matthew Waller, uh, the dean of the business school, we're supporting him and promoting him and his other subject matter experts up there, faculty and staff and students. Um, but the team that does that is Katie and Lindsay. Lindsay's been with ModBank for two years now, and she's actually developed a number of the different uh, tactics that we have. Um, she's done a lot of the, she's led a lot of the research that's helped us uh, develop the ideas and ways that we approach this. So uh, she's, she's known as Lindsay, the LinkedIn legend or L3. Uh, she will answer to that. Apparently, when she's out on Dixon Street, people mention that all the time that, hey, I saw you on LinkedIn, you know, <laughs> 20 years ago. Who would have ever thought something like that? All right, so I'm gabbing too much. I'm going to turn this over uh, and let these guys talk to you about it. So, Katie B., if you want to jump in. Yes. So, like Brent said, I'm Katie Brandt, and I'm a junior account executive at ModThink. And today we're going to be talking about thought leadership and specifically how you can accomplish thought leadership through using LinkedIn. So I'm going to give a quick overview and then I'll hand it back over to the legend and she can explain some more. So thought leadership is really taking subject matter expertise and pairing it with the right tactics to provide value to others. So by producing content and increasing engagement on LinkedIn, you can really become a thought leader. And so a good example of this is Lindsay herself. So she has subject matter expertise in LinkedIn, but she doesn't stop there. She uses the correct tactics by producing content and engaging on LinkedIn to make herself a thought leader by providing value to her followers and her network. So what does it take to be a thought leader? Um, to me, the first few things that pop into my mind when I think of a thought leader is someone who's passionate, driven, and engaging with their subject matter expertise. And like I said, it's someone who knows how to add value to their network. So through networking and establishing and growing your digital presence and building content, you can build trust with your network. And so this really helps you become a thought leader and not simply a subject matter expert. So many of our thought leaders ask us, where do they start? They don't know what to start with topics and content to be producing on LinkedIn. So you see this list of many different ideas of content that you can start producing. 
And I'm going to focus on these three that we've done that we've seen grow. So the Mod Think Minute is one that we do, and it's just a one minute video each week on a tip or trick. And this really provides some benefit to our clients and other people in our network because they can see a digital marketing tool or something on LinkedIn that they can start doing and start adding value to their networks as well. And then another great area to start in is news. As you can see in the top right, Brent posted some news about the Northwest Arkansas U of A news. And so this is a really great way to start with a topic to post as well. And then on the bottom right, you can see five important tips to manage your suddenly all virtual team. And this is a topic that's really relevant to everyone right now because of COVID-19. So I think this is a really great way to start if you don't know what kind of topic or content you want to start producing is think about how your subject matter expertise can apply to COVID and think about ways that you can post about that and provide value to your networks that way. So now, Lindsay, do you want to talk more about growing your network? Yeah, definitely. So Katie's kind of laid the basis on thought leadership, and now we're going to talk about how to use that to grow your network. So in this, in this section, we'll talk about cleaning up your profile, the different content types that you can publish on LinkedIn, and some tips for engagement. So we're not going to walk you through the typical, here's how to set up your LinkedIn profile, here's how to check all the boxes today. But um, this is a blog that I wrote a while back about how to become a LinkedIn all-star. So it walks you through the process of setting up your profile and making sure that everything is filled out completely so that you can have a completed profile. And we do this with our different subject matter experts that we work with with our clients. And you can see over on the right side, this is one of the scorecards that we've done with our clients to be able to tell kind of where they're at in terms of their LinkedIn process and just make sure that everything is completed before we get started promoting content from them. And then here are the different types of content that you can post on LinkedIn. It's split into three parts. It's articles, posts, and shares. So over on the left here, you can see an article that I published on LinkedIn about LinkedIn trending. And we'll talk a little bit more about kind of the um, content of this later, but um, LinkedIn articles are a good way to produce long form content, typically kind of like a blog post or a white paper, more around a thousand words and something that you're really able to get out more content and more material. Here in the middle, you can see that we have a post from Brent. And this is actually a PDF carousel type post. We'll go into a little bit more detail about that later, but you can see on his post here, it has a lot of great content. Um, it tags the ModThink page along with using a visual and hashtags to increase the reach of that. And then over on the right, Katie shared ModThink's post actually about this webinar. So you can see there, um, instead of just sharing it without saying anything, she added her own caption and hashtags to it to make the post more valuable and show her audience why they should care about it. So this is an example of one of the PDF carousels that I created for ModThink. Um, here you can see that it's multiple different pages. And one of the really cool things about posting these on LinkedIn is that it's actually interactive. So we're going to flip over to LinkedIn here. And you can see this is the post itself. So it looks normal like a regular post, but whenever you scroll over it, you can see that you can actually flip through some of the different pages here and be able to see the content in that way. And we've been incorporating these a lot more in our content along with our clients because we've seen that the LinkedIn algorithm really favors them. And it's something that it's um, being promoted more and it has increased visibility because you're able to flip through these here. Let me get back to presenting one second. Okay. And now Katie's going to talk to you a little bit about tips for engaging on LinkedIn as well. Yes, so there's three major ways that you can engage on LinkedIn, and this is through connecting, commenting, and resharing. So connecting is really the building blocks of your network on LinkedIn. So one tip that Lindsay challenged me with that I'm trying to get better at is sending a personal message with each connection. So you'll get a pop up like this one on the top far left that says you can customize this invitation and you can tell the person why you would want to see their network or why you're interested in their industry. And this is a really great way to build your connections with people that are, have the same values as you. And another way to find out people that you would like to see their network and see what they're producing is on the bottom left and you can see their interests. And so this is if you're on someone's profile and you scroll all the way to the bottom. And a lot of time what they're interested in is like companies or industry professionals. And so if you have these in common, then you would probably enjoy the content that they're producing as well. 
The next way is by commenting, and this is to congratulate others or give insights on an article or other things like that. So as you can see on Megan's post, she's our most recent mod thinker. She was hired last week and Brent and Karen both commented on there to congratulate her. So this helps Megan because Brent and Karen's networks can now see her post as well as Megan's network can see Brent and Karen and maybe increase their network through connecting with them. And then the next way is by resharing and Lindsay touched on this, but as you can see, I reshared Mod Thinks post and by adding my new caption to it, it, uh, it helps my network see ModThink and maybe follow them and see what they're up to as well. And by adding my own hashtags different from what the original post has, all the people that follow those hashtags can see my post as well. And uh, I'm seeing some chats coming in. I don't want to check them because I'm sharing, but do we have any questions right now? Uh, Karen? Yeah, I was going to say, I, I see some of the questions right now that are okay. popping up and certainly I want to make sure we go through these. We're going through this information, I think, fairly quickly, but we're going to go through and actually show you some examples uh, on LinkedIn here in a little bit as well and kind of break those down. Let's see, I can Bill, answer a couple of questions if you want. I was going to say, okay, so Bill asks, um, on the post, is there an easy template that you can use that best fits things into the space? He says his posts look clunky. You guys have an answer for that? Yes, I can answer that. A lot of times for our personal posts or for ModThink's post, we use an app called Canva, C-A-N-V-A, and it's a website as well, not just an app on your phone, but you can just customize it to any dimensions and use a, a, a lot of free tools to make those posts a certain size that you like that doesn't look clunky. Yeah, and I actually made this right here on Canva. Um, this is just using the square template and kind of piecing together different aspects to make it visually appealing. Yeah, Bill, they, actually, they do have templates, though, that are sized specifically for different social media channels. So there's Instagram, Facebook, and some other things like that. Um, okay, so Lori's asking us, uh, do you have to have a paid account to be adding comments uh, when you're connecting? No, you don't. But sometimes Lindsay might have a better answer for this. But often when you connect with someone, it does give you that option. And every once in a while, when you go to connect with someone, they won't have that option. And I think it's their privacy settings that won't allow That's for right. it at times. Yep. That's exactly right. So for the most part, uh, you don't have to have the pay account. Right. Um, let's see. And then uh, Chris is asking, is there a rule of thumb for hashtags? Um, how many should you use and those things. And we'll go through that here in just a little bit. Um, did anybody else, while we kind of stop here a little bit, does anybody have any questions? Let's move on. Okay, we'll go back and we'll keep going here. All right, Lindsay, do you wanna take it away with owning your industry? Yes, um, so now we're gonna get into more about how to own your industry and some of the tactics that we're gonna talk about here are company pages, hashtags like Chris asked about, business intelligence, and then more advanced content. So moving into company pages, I'm assuming that since a lot of you are looking to grow your business, you may already have a company page or are exploring that as another aspect and channel for your business to be able to promote content. So some of the benefits of having company pages are that you're able to see different metrics. So here in the top left corner, um, you can see this is from one of our clients. We're able to look at the number of impressions that our client has had on their company page. So this is about the past six months. Um, we're able to look at this and also get a better feel for who our audience is, where they're located, kind of more details about them so that we can tailor our content to them. Um, and then over on the right here, whenever you're an admin for pages like this, you have different um, abilities to post content like creating an event, inviting your connections, sponsoring a job, um, and also just different things that allow you to utilize that page better. So in addition to having a company page, it's also good to have personal profiles that you're pushing different content out from. And that's not a paid feature. That's, that's something that comes as a part of the platform. Yes, and you can have a lot of different admins on your page too. Um, I know for the ModThink one, I think every mod thinker has admin access to that. So no worries on like a maximum number of admins there. And then moving forward, uh, this kind of answers some of Chris's question, but for hashtags, um, we do have some rules of thumb that we use for our content. In hashtags, there are essentially two parts that we recognize, um, branded hashtags and generic hashtags. So branded hashtags are those that are specific to your business. So you can see in this post here, hashtag mod thinking is one of ours because it's a mod think um, hashtag. And then generic are some of the ones that 
they're not specific to your business, but it's just kind of general and they're related to the content that you're producing. So for this Mod Think Minute, um, it was a video between me and Faith and we talked about uh, actually hashtags on LinkedIn. So here you can see how some of the hashtags that we used were LinkedIn tips and digital marketing. And those are just generic ones that a lot of different people will use. Um, and then for us, whenever we're thinking about adding hashtags to our posts, we typically like to keep it to about four to five hashtags maximum. Uh, we always call it tag dumping whenever people will just kind of toss in a bunch of random um, tags down at the bottom of it. But for the most part, we do a little bit of hashtag research before we publish our content. So you can see over on the left here, um, in the search bar where you would search for people or pages, you can search a hashtag. So here I started typing hashtag content to get um, a better feel about the hashtags that are related to that. So you can see the predictive text will bring up all of these different hashtag options here. And if you click on one of these, you can see how large of a following it has and also follow hashtags. So this is good if you know that like content is something that you want to be learning more about or it's something that you're doing, you can see the related hashtags that are going on there. So you can get a better idea for following those and then also seeing content related to those things. Um, and yeah, then, so I, I think there's there's like make sure we understand there's two top two sides to hashtags. One, you can use those and you can find hashtags for topic areas that you want to follow. And you have a direct link to say, hey, follow this. Um, and then on top of that, you want to push yourself into different hashtags is what, you know, what Lindsay's describing there. Um, but let's see, I think um, Chris asked a good question here. Thank you, Chris. Uh, does my profile have to be public uh, for me to be able to post uh, to get reach into the different hashtag networks? No, I don't believe so. Um, in my blog about becoming a LinkedIn all-star, there's a little bit more um, regarding the public profile and kind of your settings there. And that's an option. If you're on your LinkedIn profile, it's in the top right corner. It's edit public profile and URL. So you can see um, some of the different options there for what you want to be visible or hidden to connections and non-connections. But you can post and include hashtags and it doesn't matter what your profile visibility is. And if you're wanting to be a micro influencer, we highly recommend you make that public. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly being public also can get searched by Google, uh, which is also important. Let's see, Karen asked us, uh, is, it, is there a different profile for setting up your business page versus your individual page? Those things are all just pretty straightforward. When you go to set up a company page, it gives you the options that you want to do in the profile. Uh, template it runs through the whole thing it's step by step um, just like with Facebook and Instagram and the other social media networks they try to make it as simple as possible for you um, so that you'll use their products and they can get your information and they can sell ads and different things um, let's but I will say you do have to have a LinkedIn profile in order to make a company page because someone has to be the admin on it and it links right. to a LinkedIn profile so assuming most of you guys already do, that's just another uh, thing you need to be aware of. All right, so Caitlin's asking a great question. What do you think about um, posting lighthearted or personal content? Uh, she likes seeing those pieces from others, but um, oftentimes I post them, they tend to get more engagement. I feel like people have different thoughts on that. Um, there's definitely, um, so the rule of thumb that we use is sort of the thing that my grandmother always told me on the first day, you're not supposed to talk about politics, religion, or sex. So those are the things we need you to stay away from. The point being, this is a business network. Let's keep it to business topics and, and those types of things. Uh, people really do respond to inspirational, uh, personal, uh, you know, when it's related to your business, I think, um, I don't know if anybody knows Dan Sanker uh, with, um, oh gosh, now I just forgot his company. Uh, he's actually a, a case stack. developed case stack. That's right. Uh, a, quite a micro influencer network as a result of the posts he does. And he very much relies on articles that he posts and he's got a very personal flavor to it. And he, he talks about the difficulties of raising his business. He puts his own little uh, spin and humor into it. So I think that's maybe the direction that um, you know, we usually try to coach people uh, to move towards. Mm -hmm. Should my hashtags always go at the end of the post? That's actually something that we contemplated putting in here. 
Um, we like to put hashtags at the end of the post just for visibility and because it makes it look cleaner. I know a lot of people who, as they would be writing their caption, they would put something along the lines of, in this Mod Think Minute, I break down the types of hashtag hashtags or kind of um, using those hashtags within the copy. That's really something that's up to you. Um, we find that it looks better and we just personally like it more having them at the end like this and also um, making it more readable by having these breaks in the paragraphs and sentences here. So that's kind of a personal preference, but it's what we do at ModThink and what we advise our clients to do. Well, and we do see good performance on those because you don't have that wall of text. There's a whole, there's a whole sort of alchemy science and uh, art to getting good scannability on the way that you look at different things. Um, there is one thing we will do in line, which is tagging people, as opposed to, and this goes into that stuffing thing. How many times have y'all seen those posts where, you know, somebody puts all this stuff up and then at the bottom, they've got 50 names that they've included there. Um, you know, the algorithm is actually what's going to take care of whether it connects you or not. If it sees you stuffing like that, it's going to downgrade your content, and put it more onto the spam side of the score. So, um, you know, that's important things to think about. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we have any more questions right now or can we move on? Okay, we'll go for it. thank you. <laughs> we'll go to the next one. Um, another great feature of using LinkedIn is the business intelligence. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen people who use premium or maybe you use LinkedIn premium yourself, but there are four different types of premium that you can use. And depending on where you are in your career or what you're looking to accomplish by using LinkedIn, that'll help you select which plan you want. Um, so you can see kind of the options here, career, business, sales, and hiring. Uh, I'm assuming the majority of you would be looking for business, growing and nurturing your network, or hiring, kind of finding more people to work on your teams. Um, so those are some of the different options. They are paid, but it does have a lot of good features if that's something that you're looking to do and expand your network. Um, another great thing about using LinkedIn is that you can see analytics on your posts and your profile views. So down at the bottom here, uh, this is a screenshot of some of the analytics that we saw from a post that I put out. Uh, you can see the difference in the different companies that my viewers who saw the posts are working in, uh, their titles, and then their locations. So this kind of goes in line with using the company pages, being able to learn more about your audience. This is the same idea. You can see who's engaging with your content and who's looking at your profile. And then over on the right here, um, we had that question earlier about is um, like, do you need to have a paid account to use InMail or can you just send the messages? InMail is something that is a feature of premium. So in the screenshot over on the far right, you can see that Brent posted a screenshot of an InMail message that he received. And it was someone who, instead of reaching out saying like, hey, I want you to buy my product or hey, can you do this? Or kind of anything along those lines, it was actually something that helped Brent and helped us with the Mod Think page fix an error that we saw. So um, you can see kind of some of Brent's thoughts over in that screenshot there and the usage for InMail in a way that wasn't like salesy. Um, hey, another question just pop, popped up. Damara is asking, uh, personal pages get a lot more engagement than business pages. Is there a way to increase the business profile? Um, the reason why the personal get more activity than the business is simply because people want to connect with people, not necessarily with businesses. But at the same time, you do want to grow your audience there. Um, and I think, Lindsay, you know, do you want to talk a little bit about, well, maybe the supply chain management department is one example? Yeah, uh, we can talk some about that. So like Brent said, the Walton College is one of our clients and um, I'm the project lead for the supply chain management project that we're working on. And so we're working with Brian Fugit, who's the head of the department. And on his LinkedIn, I believe he has around 24,000 connections. And right now, uh, the supply chain page that we took over in the fall has roughly 800. So you can kind of see that there is obviously a large gap between the followings of those. But a lot of the time, whenever we post something from one, we will post something complimentary from the other. So something that we typically have been doing strategy wise is making the personal posts that come out of a personal uh, account a little bit more personal. I know I just said that three times, but <laughs> uh, making, making those a little more personal. And then the ones that are coming from the company page are a bit more objective. Um, so you kind of have that interaction there because we found that people are more likely to comment on a person's post 
because they know who they're talking to, who they're addressing, and that they can ask a question and that Brian would be the one to answer it um, for an example there. Does that answer your question? But, and I will say one other thing, um, whenever we do something like that or post it from one of our subject matter experts accounts, you can tag the page as well so that people can see that and it'll draw traffic back to the business page. Okay, now I'm gonna go on to the next one. So, um, and then touching into advanced content. So like Katie mentioned earlier, the Mod Think Minute has been something that we've been doing weekly for the past uh, month or however long that we've been doing it. Um, and this is like a short form video content that is really easily consumable. So here we've broken down some of the different aspects of us posting those. You can see just looking at it, it's not a brick wall of text. It's really readable because you're able to look at the different sentences that are broken down and get an idea for what's happening. Um, so here you can see that we tagged the profiles, so that's Faith and Maddie in line with the text and also included that mix of hashtags. So you can see the branded mod thinking along with the generic readability, social media tips and digital marketing. And then another thing that we have found with our videos that we're producing is that whenever people are watching videos from LinkedIn, they're typically sitting at their desk, looking at it on their phone over lunch or between meetings. So a lot of the time you don't want videos to play out loud as you're doing these things. So we started dabbling in SRT files, which is essentially closed captioning on the videos. So that way, whenever people open these videos, they can read it without having to like play the audio and still know what's going on in the video. So down here, uh, you can see the captioning and this is the SRT file that we're using with our videos whenever we publish content. And then the last part of this, including the video title, this helps with SEO, which is search engine optimization and searchability. Both the SRT file and the video titles do that because it tells you what it is and what the content is about. Yeah, and I just want to uh, append to the dabbling side of things. Uh, so we're an agile marketing firm, and the way that works is we we are we set our stuff up just like a software developer would, and deliver things on very these what we call sprints every two weeks. Within those sprints, we're constantly looking at data, and we're constantly trying new things. So this was an example of we saw one one uh, uh, video go out, and we tried the next one with an SRT. And, uh, you know, we saw a 500% change in uh, engagement with the next one. Um, and as we tried more of those, we found that the, the SRT file was just a, a home run when it came to uh, making sure that your content is not just answering the questions, but technically is easier to consume as a result of it. That's dabbling. That's dabbling. Okay, so moving on. Um, we talked about the PDF carousels a little bit earlier, but here's a little bit more of a breakdown of it. Um, like we had that question about having personal content. We have found that people really do like to feel like they're connecting with people. Um, they like to have that personal side of the story or that lesson or kind of something that shows you like this person's a human and they have their own um, like stories to tell. It's not just like business, business, business. But going along with this, um, Bryn's caption was, about kind of the challenges that people are facing now that we're all working remotely or now that we're all online. So um, I kind of cut it off there, but you can see more of it. And it was about what we're doing at ModThink. So in addition to um, like how on the videos, you can add a video title, you can add a PDF or document title whenever you publish a PDF carousel. So here you can see um, along with the title picture that you see on this, the document title was also five tips for working effectively as a digital team. Um, and then this is the type that I showed you a little bit ago that you can flip through by clicking on this and it's interactive and is being very favored in the algorithm right now. And then also down at the bottom, you can see the number of pages that there are. Um, just whenever you have your mouse go over this, that's what will pop up. And then one of the last things that we'll talk about in terms of advanced content is alt text. This is a feature that LinkedIn has that really helps with accessibility and also searchability. So whenever you publish an image on LinkedIn in um, whether it's an article or just as a post, it'll give you the option to add alt text on the picture itself. 
So this was one that we posted for this webinar. And then adding the alt text, it tells you, um, kind of makes your image more accessible. And whenever you think about alt text, you can essentially just add whatever the um, image is about or what's happening in the image. So whether that's a picture of a group of people or a graphic like this one, you can just explain that in 120 characters or less. So you can see that we had ModThink Marketing and then the title of our presentation here. And just to fully explain that one, um, this has been something that Google's done for some time now. Anywhere on a, on a website, there's, a, there's an image, there needs to be an alt text. And what happens is as a reader for somebody who may need, you know, visually impaired in some way, the reader's gonna go across and when it reaches that, it's gonna state, use the alt text to say this is what the image is. Um, this is a new thing that we saw pop up probably about three or four months ago that, uh, that um, LinkedIn has started using. But just those simple little things, just because so many people don't do them, is actually something the algorithms just seem to love. It's like a checkbox that if you don't have this particular checkbox, then you know they're gonna they're gonna go with other content that's done that. So it's one of those things. If you're not doing it, do it, and um, you know don't forget about it. Definitely. Do we have any questions right now about some of the advanced content that we talked about? I have a question. Yes. Um, when, with the PDF carousel, is that a, a Canva image that you create in Canva or a series of them and then you paste them into like a Word document and you save them as a PDF? What's the process? It actually, it will depend on what platform you use to make it. So in Canva, um, or actually I guess in general, any PDF carousel like it works as a carousel if it is a multi-page PDF that you can upload as a document on LinkedIn. So in Canva, you have the option to have multiple pages. And then whenever you go to export that, you can download it as a PDF and select all of the pages. And then from that, it'll kind of make it like a book that saves to your desktop. And whenever you upload that into LinkedIn as a document, it will just immediately have that flip through feature. But okay. we also have graphic designers who are real graphic designers um, who are using things like InDesign or other Adobe platforms that it's essentially the same thing. Any kind of like multiple page document that's saved as a PDF will work in that way. And you said the LinkedIn algorithms really like that PDF function right now? Yeah, we've found great success with those and we've been pushing out a lot more through our different channels that we have. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that, is that all your slides there? Okay. Yeah, that's all the slides there. <laughs> so I was going to say, okay, so marrying all these things together, um, I think we might want to show maybe a few examples, but um, the, now it's where you, you've got these tools in front of you. Now, how do you use that to grow your network, build engagement, and establish, you know, your authority? Um, the best way to think about that is think about your customer, your potential customer, and what questions are they asking? Find ways to answer that. And when you're answering it, don't answer it with a buy my product answer. Buy it with a, this is, this is the way that you can solve that. And just by you being the person that mentioned it, you're promoting your own product. Um, the other thing to do is to, uh, is to ask questions. If you can ask, if you can put information out there and ask questions and get people to respond, mm -hmm. um, that's a fantastic way to do it. One yeah. of the things that Matt Waller has found just recently in the past couple of weeks that has worked fantastic is he's gone through and he's, he's posted an article with a, with a, a caption and, an article and, a, and a question at the top of it and people will respond to that. But then he's come back later and we've created for him a carousel that has, hey, here's some of the things from that question I asked the other day and this is what people said. So, you know, the, the engagement we had on that particular follow-up post was significant uh, because so many people were like, hey, he listened to me and I'm gonna share this now with my friends so that they can, you know, my network so that they can see what's going on. Um, yeah. You know, we're constantly trying to find creative ways to to explore those ideas. But if you can find ways to think about your customer and how you can answer their questions or engage them, start, prompt a question, you know, go for it. And I think if I were, you know, the last thing I would say is, um, and, and I, if, if you look at my thread, you'll see I'm such a reluctant uh, engager when it comes to 
you know, being my own micro influencer, it's hard to do. Um, but just because your post doesn't get very many views, don't, don't let it stop you. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. The more regular you are about doing it, the more the algorithm rewards you, the more people get a chance to see what you're doing. Um, and it does just take that discipline to be out there on a regular basis. Yeah, and um, to give a visual to Brent's comments there, this was the post that we helped Matt put out, basically um, asking what advice do you have for our graduating class? And you can see it got really good engagement, 84 likes and 85 comments. And the comments are filled with people um, just offering their advice for what they would give to the class of 2020. And um, in all of the different comments that we had there, we put those together to essentially make a PDF carousel. So that's this here. Um, it was just like a follow up to that post talking about, okay, I asked this, um, here's the advice that I got. And if you flip through here, it's the quotes of the people who responded on that post. So um, this also, you can see it got great engagement, 83 likes and 12 comments. And Matt emailed us after this had been up for a couple of days, and he was just blown away by the response that he got of people personally emailing him or sending him a message, just very grateful to have been given the opportunity to interact with his post and then also be featured in this follow-up post. So flipping through here, you can see there are 19 pages of quotes. Do we have any have other questions? I have a question. I assume there's no limit to the number of pages of your PDF um, carousel? There's mm -hmm. no limit, but we have found that there is a maximum file size. Um, and I, I believe it's one megabyte, which is okay. very big, but we have hit that and had to kind of uh, readjust our content from there. But there, we have we tested, like pages. how many pages, you know, and there's not a method, there's not a way to see how far along people will go into the, into it yet. But again, the things are changing so often. We're always just kind of looking for new stuff. There's, uh, um, since the pandemic and everybody having changed their habits, uh, another one of our clients is uh, roller weight loss and advanced surgery. And, you know, as you can imagine, they're elective surgery. And so as soon as the hospitals all change their focus, their business basically was shut down. Uh, but what we started doing was going online more. Now that audience is very much Facebook. And so these were Facebook tactics, but they're very similar. Uh, we started thinking about the questions that people would have while they're, while they're sitting home waiting for things to open back up. And uh, we started leveraging the Facebook Live to have Q and A's on a regular basis. Now that elective surgeries are going, Josh is so busy. Dr. Josh is crazy busy. Um, Doing a LinkedIn Live is not quite so simple. Right now, they have a very, you have to meet a threshold of a certain amount of uh, engagement and content production before they'll even consider letting you uh, have that platform. So um, it's not really an option. The videos, still, they do perform well. And if you put that SRT file on there, it'll take it, you know, five to 10 times uh, farther engagement. Any other questions? I hope we've been able to give you guys value today. I think this is great. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or go ahead and type them into the chat. Um, as I said earlier, we will be sharing the link once we have this on YouTube. That'll either happen tomorrow or Monday, depending on our marketing team. And also, um, mod thinkers, can we count on getting the, the slide deck? That we can It'll also be share. on SlideShare on LinkedIn under my account. All yeah. right. Okay. But we can send it over as well. Okay. Well, we can drive people to that account. Just send me that link. Um, excellent. Well, I do again want to thank um, our mod thinkers, Brent Robinson. Thank you so much for devoting time, your time and your team's time. I know you guys are all really busy. And Katie and Lindsay, thank you very much. We appreciate your expertise and showing all the fresh new ideas that you have to um, help us uh, be better at our LinkedIn marketing and profiles. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you very much. And if you have any other questions, oh, sorry. If you have any other questions, feel free to send us an email or connect with us on LinkedIn and we'd be happy to help. Okay, I'll, I'll share those as well um, when I send that out. 
So again, thank you everyone. I know there are two people on the phone. I'm gonna send you a text. I know who one of them is, but I don't know which one she is. So <laughs> anyway, um, we appreciate everyone for joining us and hope you join us again. We have more workshops lining up all the time. You can find them on rogerslowell.com and also on our YouTube channel once they've been aired. Thank you.